On the line, we got our main man, Dr. MJ Collier, the hip-hop doc. And uh, there's so much that we got to talk about, man, uh, especially with the passing of Chadwick Boseman, who lost his life at the age of 43 due to the effects of colon cancer. Uh, this kind of goes against the narrative that we've known for quite some time, that, hey, you should probably start getting your colon checked at 45. But yet himself and so many other younger African-Americans are being faced with this disease at a much earlier age. Why is that? Mm-hmm. Uh, one, African-Americans, like a lot of diseases, we are, you know, genetically predisposed uh, or all the, you know, everything from stress to comorbid conditions like high blood pressure, diabetes, etc. But, you know, he was in, you know, reasonably decent physical condition. So, you know, it had to be some genetic predisposition in his case because it was such a young age. But, again, for, for the average screening recommendations for people over 50, but it's 45 for people of color, African-Americans, again, disproportionately represented by this amazing disease state because 90 percent of cases occur in people that are 50 or older but if you have a first degree relative a parent or a brother or sister or someone that has colon cancer you need to get screened immediately no matter what age you are particularly uh you know you have younger parents but somebody gets diagnosed that there are uh genetic diseases that are associated with, with colon cancer uh polyp disease and that's something you need you can get checked for at any age if you have a relative that's doing that amazingly enough one of the things that the affordable care act or obamacare did was give us 13 different tests that we can get with no copay and at no cost. And one of those screening tests is the test for colon cancer. So you don't have to worry about uh, it costing you anything. If you have insurance, Medicare, or Medicaid, all of those will cover it, uh, particularly if you get a screening colonoscopy. Yeah, that was my question, uh, Dr. Collier. I saw so many people debating about that, um, saying, you know, okay, you you might want to get a screening earlier, but you can if your if your insurance says that the the minimum age was like forty five or fifty. So I think that's that's great information to know. Can you speak to as well, like symptoms? Um, if if someone maybe experiencing certain symptoms, or is this one of those things where you may not have any symptoms? Uh, you could not have any symptoms, but, you know, the most common symptom that people are, are usually noting is blood in the stool, blood on the paper when you wipe yourself. Uh, when when that happens, particularly if it happens on a regular basis and you notice it, uh, it could be anything from abdominal pain, nausea, vomiting, bloating, anemia. There's a long list of symptoms that, that uh, could be consistent with colon cancer. But what I tell people, if you've had any changes in your bowel habits, if your stool have changed in the color or character or frequency, you can have constipation, you can have diarrhea, you can have change in the caliber of your stool because a tumor starts to, to change the size of the opening in your intestine so your stool becomes thinner over time. And so that's something to note. But just, just be conscientious. I, I have people say, I never look in the toilet. You need to look in the toilet to see what's coming out of you and stay on top of that. And if anything notes, uh, any changes, follow up with your primary care physician. They can lead you in the right direction, order the colonoscopy, help you fight with the insurance company if you're under age 45 or get it, you know, because I think this has definitely been an eye opener. People seeing this, Angie, that, um, right. you know, young people can get colon cancer and colon cancer does kill you. <laughs> Yeah. Now, now, Dr. Carl, can you help us? Because a lot of times as young black men, we have a lot of phobias about getting that area of our body checked out. And uh, with prostate cancer being a big uh, issue in our community, can you help us understand the differences between the test and what goes on just for overall sake, please? Well, with the colonoscopy, uh, you know, they had uh, two tests. They had one called a flexible sigmoidoscopy, and that would really just look at the distal part of your colon. It would look on the left side in the rectum in particular, but you would miss a lot of colon cancers because a lot of them occur on the right side of the colon, which is in your appendix area. So the recommendation now is to get a colonoscopy. Now, there's an alternative test now. You've probably seen it advertised on the television called Cologuard. That's an at-home test, really. You basically uh, collect a specimen at home. You send it back to the lab uh, via... uh, you know, FedEx, UPS, or U.S. Postal Mail, and they they are looking for the genetic signs of, of colon cancer. So they're li- literally looking for DNA consistent with colon cancer. If that test is positive, then you're going to need to get a colonoscopy. And, and men, you got to, you know, we have to get over these things that we have, particularly as black men, about digital rectal exams for prostate cancer and colon cancer screenings uh, because it's very important. Uh, with insurance companies covering them now, it, there's just no excuse not to get it. Uh, and if you have a first degree relative, when people gather in groups, when your family gets together and you're just playing cards or you have a family reunion, 
Talk about your family's health. Find out what's going on in the family. What did Uncle Ben die from? What the kind of cancer did Grandmama have? I have that question all the time. People say, well, Grandmother died from cancer, but I don't know what kind. You need to know these things because uh, whatever their genetic building blocks are, you're made of the same material, making you as susceptible to those disease states. Now, Doc, how fast can you go from stage three to stage four? Because like, Chadwick had stage three colon cancer when he got diagnosed. And, you know, like, he wasn't even in the age, age range where he should have even had to get checked. So how fast can that progress? That That is the crack. You just made a great point because most of the time people are not having any symptoms until they have symptoms. And the time they by the time they have symptoms, they're usually at a later stage. Uh, the earlier stage diagnoses are, are predominantly on the screening test for people that qualify for the screening test they go get the screening test and then they find an unsuspected tumor that makes it very easy to treat and cure it's the the easiest to diagnose cancer and the easiest to treat but it's the least diagnosed and it's the least treated because people wait and don't go get their screenings so so we need to change that and flip that narrative and say look i'm going to get my my colon cancer screening i need my colonoscopy make that a part of your regular routine when you go to the doctor have the discussion even if you're not in the age range about all the skin cancer screenings, you know, breast for women, prostate for men, and colon cancer, you know, they are the number one, two, and three, uh, you know, in perspective. Now, lung cancer is the number one in men and women, regardless of whether you smoke right. or not. And then there's breast in women, prostate in men, and colon cancer is number three. But it's number three with a bullet. The incidence seems to be going up. And, uh, you know, and I don't know whether it's because of changes in the food chain, things we're eating we shouldn't be eating. Uh, people are going back to eating diets that are predominantly animal fat and red meat. Uh, and it's recommended that you eat, you know, a diet that's high in fruit, vegetables, and grains to limit your, your, um, your susceptibility to colon cancer. But, you know, in treatment, gotcha. two simple things. One, a low-dose aspirin, 81 milligram. Used to say baby aspirin, but now we call it low-dose aspirin therapy. One a day, and vitamin D. You've heard me speak about vitamin D and all the benefits on the American Cancer Society website. They specifically recommend aspirin and vitamin D as preventive therapies uh, for uh, colon cancer and all cancers, I, I think, but I'm pretty sure that, that colon Colon cancer, prostate, and breast have documented studies showing the benefits of vitamin D therapy in prevention and treatment. Uh, first thing that happens when a person is diagnosed, they're placed on vitamin D therapy because it has such great benefits uh, for them. But if you want to prevent it, take your low-dose aspirin uh, and your vitamin D, unless there's a contraindication for you taking aspirin. All right, yo, Dr. MJ Collier, thank you so much for all the information, man. Be sure you follow my brother. He is the hip-hop doc. And please, people, go out there and get checked. Black men, go get checked. Black women, go get checked. Everybody go get checked because the food ain't the same food our grandparents and our parents was eating. We are falling at an earlier age, man. So God bless y'all all. Thank you so much. Dr. MJ Collier, y'all. Yo. Thank you, Craig. I feel smarter. I feel smarter now. I feel smarter. We are the morning hustle.